Westbury is an ancient town. It is mentioned in the Doomsday Book and had a market from 1252. It lies at the foot of the chalk escarpment of Salisbury Plain, on a ridge of green sand between the chalk and the clay vale. It became an important centre for the woollen cloth industry and later the railways. It has a number of interesting buildings, most of which can be found around the church and the market place and the area to the south. The information for this walk is based on the Town Council's Blue Plaque Trail, the Wiltshire edition of Pevsner's Buildings of England, the Victoria County History, and entries in the list of listed buildings. I will start where the Blue Plaque Trail starts at the Laverton Institute, built in 1872-3 by Abraham Laverton, a prosperous mill owner and at one time Member of Parliament. It was originally a public hall, but became the offices of the Urban District Council in 1899. It is still the home of the Town Council, as well as a venue for public hire. This imposing building was designed by W. J. Stent of Warminster in an Italianate Gothic style, in brick with bathstone facings. Next to it is one of the oldest surviving buildings in Westbury, 6 to 8 Bratton Road. Number 6 is a timber framed building with brick infill panels built between 1480 and 1530. It has a main range containing a hall and a cross wing, with a parlour typical of the time. Number 8 is a later, probably early 17th century rubble stone addition. Heading east along Bratton Road, we soon come to Prospect Square. Also built by Abraham Laverton in 1869, and also designed by Stent. It is a charming development of 39 houses surrounding a green. The rents from the 32 houses on either side of the green funding the seven almshouses at the top. It is built in a vernacular revival design, with each group of houses having a different design. We will head northeast along Bratton Road some distance in order to visit the cemetery, which contains three listed mausolea. The Lopes Mausoleum is in the form of a Norman-style chapel with apse, built in ashlar stone and dating from about 1910. Nearby is the Ludlow Mausoleum, also for the Lopes family, who were the Barons Ludlow. It is a hexagonal structure with a cupola and gabled lantern and windows on each face. To the right is the Phipps Mausoleum, the finest of the three, with a grade two star listing. It is octagonal with a spire and eight gabled lantern. This dates to around 1871, when John Lewis Phipps of Leighton House was buried there. All are in a poor state of repair. Returning to the town, we turn down Alfred Street. The earliest reference to it is from 1827. It is named after Alfred the Great, who defeated the Danes at nearby Eddington in 878. First we pass a modern housing development on the left of the site of Town Farm. North of this is the conversion of Bitton Mill, one of the two largest mills in Westbury, to flats. Three ranges of mill buildings form a triangular group. The southeast range may date to the late 18th century and was extended in 1829 to create a larger engine house. This steam engine powered the mill until 1939 and was the most powerful in the county. The building is of brick with segmented head windows and was originally five stories high. Inside are cast iron columns and beams. The North Range was built in 1868, probably by W. J. Stent, and was originally of four storeys. At the street end of this range is a two-storey timekeeper's cottage. The Northwest Range dates from the early 19th century and has a pedimented Tuscan doorpiece. 
the refurbishment and the new development have been kept separate, and this has enhanced the setting of the mill buildings. To the north of the mill is a property known as the Little House, dating from the early 19th century. It was run as a tan yard and a malt house in the mid-19th century. The horse and groom is first mentioned in 1882, but probably dates from the late 18th century. 21 Alfred Street, known as the Lodge, dates from around 1840. Several horse trainers were based here in the late 19th and early 20th century, maybe giving rise to the name of the pub. At the northern end of Alfred Street, as it approaches the marketplace, is Ferndale House, a conservative club. This is an early 18th century former clothier's house. It is notable for its four fine Palladian windows, with an arched window over the door. The former stable block and ostler's quarters can be seen to the left. We have now reached the marketplace, but before exploring it, we will take a small diversion to the right to look at the Ludlow Arms in Fore Street. This dates from the late 18th to early 19th century. Note the four-centred arch on the left with prominent keystone and springers. Previously it was the King's Arms, then the Forester. The current name presumably comes from Henry Lopes, second Baron Ludlow, who was appointed Deputy Lieutenant of Wiltshire in 1900 and served in the Wiltshire Yeomanry. We will encounter the Lopes family several times on this trip. According to the Blue Plaque Trail, a post office was moved here in 1744, which seems very early. Opposite, on the north side of the marketplace, separated from it by the A350, is Bank House, a Grade II star listed building from the early 18th century, built of brick with five bays and a fine carved stone shell hood. Crossing the road we come to the marketplace proper. On the west side is a fine terrace of late 18th century buildings, including the Crown Inn and, until recently, the White Lion on the corner. Opposite is the Old Town Hall of 1815, built on the site of a market house by Sir Manasseh Massey Lopes. He hailed from Maristow in Devon, from which Maristow Street takes its name. He bought the parliamentary borough and was MP for the town for a time in the early 19th century. The town hall is of bathstone ashlar with a colonnaded ground floor, behind which are shop fronts. The Lopes arms are carved on the tympanum. To the right is Perkins Pieces, 18th century with an Edwardian frontage and occupying the southeast corner of the marketplace is the Lopes Arms. This is mostly 18th century and was the Lord Abingdon Arms from 1754 to 1809, but is said to be on the site of a 16th century inn known as St George and the Dragon. The blue plaque leaflet tells us that in the late 18th century at election time, the candidates were sworn in at the Guildhall and then carried on chairs covered with ivy to the inn, whilst throwing silver to the crowds. Next to the inn is the gateway to the churchyard, a perfect juxtaposition of sacred and secular. Before exploring the churchyard, we will divert up Maristow Street. Previously Silver Street, it was renamed by Sir Nasser Lopes in the early 19th century. He had his family home in Westbury at numbers 1 to 3, also known as the Manor House. It is early 18th century and has a semicircular porch with Tuscan columns. Number 1 is an extension of slightly later date, and a 19th century shop front has been inserted under it and the left-hand bay of the main house. Number 5, which is part of the same premises, is possibly late 17th century. Facing the end of Maristow Street are numbers 14 to 16 Edward Street, dating from 1774, 
and the post office until 1924. Of special interest are three gabled extensions at the rear, one belonging to number 12, which have mansard tiled roofs and pigeon openings in the gables. The curved frontage on the opposite corner was once the police station. Note the fine brickwork on the façade. This takes us up to Church Lane, from which we can enter the churchyard from the west. All Saints Church stands in a very pleasant enclosed churchyard. The present structure is thought to date from 1437, when William Westbury was allowed to build a chantry chapel, and probably rebuilt the whole church. The blue plaque suggests that there was a church on the site going back to Saxon times. Pevsner describes the present church as still at the stage of transition between decorated and perpendicular. It was then restored by T. H. Wyatt in 1847, and the west window dates from this time. The church is cruciform with a central rectangular crossing tower. The battlements on the nave and west front are a distinctive feature. The verger's cottage in the northeast corner of the churchyard was once the vicarage. The sunken garden beside the churchyard was originally dug in 1826 as the mill pond for the town mill. On the other side of the churchyard, the church hall and office in 19th century Gothic style were originally a girls' school. Brookhaven in the southeast corner was originally three cottages dating from the 18th century. Next door, church view is even older, dating from the 17th century or early 18th. Together they form a pleasing ensemble. From here we can also see the rear of number 35 Church Street, which contains a medieval window, which is evidence that this was the house of the precentor of Salisbury Cathedral, who was the ecclesiastical authority in the parish until 1846. From Church Street, the front of number 35 is an imposing early 19th century brick building, now offices. Next to it is a nice group of six houses, formerly known as Church Terrace, built around 1820. Little Chantry is 18th century and was formerly Church Farm. Next to it, a three-storey building was a factory, dating from 1824, part of which became a short-lived technical school, established by Henry Laverton in 1897. On the corner of Edward Street is Edgar House, which is a fine 18th century remodelling of an earlier house. The listing describes it as having a front of strong character. The interior is also said to be good and includes a staircase of 1730. At the rear, the roof joins the slope of number four, both houses having clearly been one at some point. Adjoining it is a bathroom showroom, which looks Art Deco, with distinctively curved windows at first floor level on the frontage to Edward Street. Westbury Swimming Pool was presented to the town by Henry Laverton in 1887 to mark Queen Victoria's Silver Jubilee. It was designed by Halliday and Anderson of Cardiff. It is a fine example of a late Victorian swimming pool still in use. A tall Flemish gable to the pool hall is its most prominent feature. The roof is supported by cast iron round arched trusses featuring decorative patterning and the heraldry of Laverton. The pool was sometimes drained and boarded over for use as a gymnasium or a dance hall. It forms a group with Angel Mill, also once owned by Laverton. This is the town's other main mill building, and, like Bitten Mill, it has been converted into flats. It dates from the beginning of the 19th century, and the main range is an impressive building of four storeys. It was probably the first factory in Wiltshire to be driven by a steam engine. These buildings are somewhat obscured by later sheds around the periphery, which are now converted to shops. Substantial four-storey wings have been added as part of the conversion. 
and while they reflect the massing and scale of the original buildings, the detailing is nowhere near as robust, and the court at the back has none of the charm of the bitten mill. Opposite, the former sorting office has become Morrison's supermarket. To the north of Angel Mill, All Saints Crescent was built from 2000 on the site of a former clinic. Further down Edward Street is Westbury House, now the library, once the home of Henry Laverton, owner of Angel Mill. It is a substantial brick building from the late 18th century, with a later addition to the north. It was used as a school in the mid-19th century, and as an umbrella factory during World War II. Opposite is the new High Street, built in the 1960s, on the site of a large house known as Fountainville. Fountainville was built in 1884 for glove factory owner Mr. Jeffries. It was derelict by 1930 and was taken over by the MOD during the Second World War. It was demolished in 1955 to make way for the shopping parade, designed by Wallace, Finley Smith and Ball, and built between 1961 and 1965. Prior to that, Westbury's shopping area was quite fragmented, centering on two separate areas, Maristow Street and Warminster Road. A new development to provide a focus for the town's retail offer was needed. Pevsner describes the two terraces as quite formal, but they seem to work and are now classic 60s designs. Having flats above the shops is also very much in accord with current thinking. Beyond is a purple brick and concrete bank of 1968-70, to 70, in Pevsner's words, overladen with brutalist paraphernalia. At West End is the Baptist Church, built in 1869, and the Roman Catholic Church of St Bernadette, built in 1938. Nearby, on the corner of Station Road, the Methodist Church was opened in 1926. Two outlying buildings are drawn to our attention by Pevsner. He describes 24 Warminster Road, now offices, as early 19th century, Sonian, with typical incised Grecian ornament. In Eden Vale Road, William House Court was once the Union Workhouse. The main range is an early 19th century adaptation of a late 18th century structure. Westbury has many old buildings, and this is just a selection of them. The importance of some, like the Royal Oak Pub, which was on the site of the Aldi supermarket, was not recognised until too late. Later alterations had disguised its 17th century origins. There is sometimes more to the town than at first meets the eye.